Hey, what's going on guys? Flick here. Welcome back to another one of these flashback FIFA episodes. And today's video has been heavily requested in the comments section of the last few uploads. We're going to be revisiting our FIFA 17 career mode with Southampton. If you're new to the series, this is where we revisit our old career mode saves. And with the power of FIFA 20 on PC, we're able to import our player stats from old FIFAs into the current state of FIFA in FIFA 20. And then we're going to run a simulation to see how our old career mode squads would perform in the modern day Premier League. We've had some interesting results so far with both the Liverpool and West Ham episodes. And I'm genuinely curious how this Southampton squad is going to perform. And honestly, I love this career mode so much. I'm just a big fan of Southampton's philosophy. And the fact that you guys were able to teach me a lot about the club made this crew mode really enjoyable. So I'm hoping that this flashback episode is going to be great as well. If you like this style of content and want to see similar videos in the future, make sure you leave a like on this video. That's the best way to let me know you're enjoying what I'm uploading. And it also helps promote my channel to new people as we push on towards FIFA 21 within the next few months. But with all that said, let's get underway with this flashback Southampton episode. One thing I specifically remember about this career mode is how quickly we were able to progress this Southampton squad. For example, we qualified for Champions League at the end of season one. We went on to win the EuroLeague as well as the Premier League in season two. And I think a big reason for that is that we were able to make a lot of transfers in this save, both selling off some players and bringing in some high rated players, which definitely helped our chances. But starting with our goalkeeper, we have Pickford. He was still playing for Sunderland at the time. We managed to help him reach an 82 overall rating and we were able to bring him in before Everton made the transfer. Of course, we have some recognizable names in our back line, but the overall ratings might be a bit unfamiliar for you all. Starting with Bertrand, he was a solid defender, nothing too special with him, but he did the job at left back, 28 years old in season three, and he probably would be an area that we would look to improve if we continued this career mode at any point. And then of course we have Van Dyke, reaching 83 overall rating in this save, but of course that's nowhere near where he is today in terms of his overall now that he's at Liverpool. But he's just another example of how good Southampton are at developing players. Of course they do eventually go on to move to quote, bigger clubs, but still, it's amazing to see how his career has progressed over the years. And then next up, we have Semedo, who his potential has dropped quite a bit in recent years, but in this career mode save, he reached an 85 overall rating, no complaints there. Uh, kind of strange to see him having a higher overall than Van Dyke, but we move on with Cedric, who has I who I believe has departed Southampton now, but he reached an 81 in this save, and he was actually one of the better right backs in FIFA 17. Had a good amount of pace, good stamina, good technical attributes, really everything you would want in a right back. I actually looked up Cedric's career progress. He spent some time at Inter, but now he's out on loan at Arsenal. Very interesting stuff there, considering Southampton have two promising young right backs in Valerie and Walker Peters. Moving on to our midfield, we have a nice trio here with this 4-3-3 attacking formation, and Ward Prowse will make an appearance at 83 overall in FIFA 17. 23 years old in this save, can play a variety of positions, but he's now 24 in real life. Still really no idea what sort of potential he might have. I feel like he goes up in his overall a little bit each year, so hopefully that'll continue for him and all you Southampton fans. On the opposite side, we have Schneiderlan, who we signed for Manchester United, um, and I think a reason for that signing is that we he used to play for Southampton, but yeah, his career has not exactly gone quite as planned um, with the amount of potential he had back then has dropped quite a bit but he was an absolute beast in FIFA 17 and uh, yeah I believe he's actually making the move to another club from Everton in the next season and then finally we have Kovalenko 81 overall in this save and the reason I liked him is that he had the four star weak foot three star skomus and the high high work rates which I really enjoy at the center attacking mid position but he was incredibly balanced and he did work in this career mode save. Closing things out with our front three, we had Buffel at the left wing position. Had five star skills back in FIFA 17, it was a lot of fun to use, and it's always nice to have a little bit of trickery on the wings. We have Volan here at the striker position, 84 rated in this save. 
and uh, similar to Kovalenko has high high work rates interesting stuff to see so we had a squad that really liked to work all over the pitch and then closing things out with Walcott a former Southampton Youth Academy player back in FIFA 17 apparently he could play a variety of positions but was a good signing for us and was solid at the right wing position we'll also highlight a couple of players from the substitutes and reserves beginning with Hoiber current Southampton captain and was pretty solid at the in the midfield for us. I used him as more of a rotational player because we just had higher overall players in our starting 11, but still definitely did the job whenever he got called upon. And then Tadic actually has seen his overall go up over the years, currently playing for Ajax, but back then he was a left midfielder, only had the two star weak foot, which has since been upgraded, but another good attacker that we could bring on at any sort of time. Finally, I do want to give a special shout out for J-Rod. He was a left midfielder, but I felt like he was the best striker that I ever used in FIFA 17. He just absolutely outplayed his stats. Of course, he's moved on to Burnley now, and he plays striker for them for the most part. And I don't know, there was just something special about this card or this player in career mode. And uh, also the name, J-Rod, you just can't go wrong there. We had a load of Youth Academy prospects in this squad. Really none of them was able to feature too much just because their potential and their overall didn't get high enough. But yeah, you can look at all the Youth Academy players that we signed. I wanted our Youth Academy to be an emphasis in this crew mode save. And I think we accomplished that mission. Here's a side-by-side -side look between the current Southampton squad and the squad we were able to achieve in our personal career mode. All you Southampton fans, let me know what you think of the squad's performance in this Premier League season. They do seem to be safe from relegation, which is a positive, but from what I've noticed, they seem to have had a lot of highs and a lot of lows. This is how the squad is going to shape up with the stats imported into FIFA 20. For the most part, overall ratings are going to be the same. A couple of changes here and there, but with this 4-3-3 attacking formation, I know it's going to be heavily reliant on our midfield for these simulations, which I don't think is a bad thing. We have 85 rated Schneiderlan there, as well as Ward Prowse, who might go up in his overall over the course of the season due to his potential, as well as Kovalenko. So I'm hoping we can qualify for Champions League just like we achieved in season one of our save. There's some very interesting career trajectory changes for players that are in the current Southampton squad, but we're not in FIFA 17, starting with Danny Ings. Things are just about the same for him. Really, the only change is that he is at Liverpool with an 80 overall rating instead of a 79 rating like he currently has at Southampton. Yannick Vestergaard is up next, and his overall potential has dropped down a little bit since FIFA 17. Back then, he had an 81 overall, and of course, he did make the big money move over to Southampton a couple of seasons ago. I haven't really followed along his progress too much, but still seems to be a solid defender. Bednarek has seen a pretty massive increase to his overall and potential from playing in the Polish League now to being in the Premier League and an 84 potential for him. Awesome to see that sort of growth. Walker Peters was still a developing talent back then in FIFA 17, and he has seen a nice increase to his overall up to a 74. He's made the move from Spurs to Southampton. I've always been a fan of the Celtic kits, but Stuart Armstrong made the move from the Scottish Premier League over to Southampton a season or two ago, and he has seen a slight change to his, both his position and his overall going to a right mid and also a 75 overall rating. That'll be it for the squad showcase. All we have left now is to simulate a season and see how we finish in the Premier League and which players contribute the most goals. I'm not going to lie, this Southampton squad finished just about where I thought they would. We just didn't have the high enough overall players to push for a top four finish. But sixth place is nothing to complain about. Looks like we'll be in Europa League next year. And just looking at the rest of the Premier League table, Manchester City had a very good season. 36 wins, one draw and one loss, finishing on 109 points. And then looking at the relegation zone, it was Norwich, Everton, kind of a surprise there, and Bournemouth. A solid run from us in the FA Cup, making it all the way to the semi-finals, eventually losing to Wolves, who were defeated by Manchester City in the final. And you could almost argue that we place more of an emphasis on our cup performance, making it all the way to the final of the Carabao Cup, eventually losing to Manchester United. I expected more of an output from our midfield, but Voland was the top goal scorer for us this season, netting 24 goals across all competition, 19 of which in the Premier League, not too bad, a goal for every two appearances there. And then Buffal with 20 goals, Kovalenko in the double digits with 11. As for the assist category, just one player, 
with double digits, Ward Prowse finished on 12 assists. In the past, I've only done one season for these simulations, except for the Stuttgart video, but I kind of want to push on to future seasons with Southampton, specifically to see how we perform in the Europa League, and if we can win that competition as well, you also have to consider we have a lot of high potential players in the squad, and I want to see how they perform, so we're going to do at least one more season for this simulation. In order to get a realistic look at how our player growth went this season, on the left, you can see our squad at the start of season one, and on the right, our squad at the start of season two. Once again, we've had a sixth place finish in the Premier League, and once again, Manchester City have won the Premier League title. I can only hope that we performed well in the EuroLeague. All I'm gonna say is that we got pretty far in the competition based off of the calendar. Anyways, for the relegated clubs, it was Derby County, Leeds United, and West Brom who will be sent back to the championship, and I believe they just got promoted last year. Again, we've reached the semifinal of the FA Cup. Brighton knocked us out of that competition, but Manchester City won the whole thing. And it was an early exit for us in the Carabao Cup, losing to Manchester United in the third round. The eventual winner was Spurs. We reached the final of the Europa League, only to lose to Milan 5-4 on penalties. That is so disheartening. But for us to reach the final, that is pretty solid for just two years of progress, just like we had two years of progress in the actual career mode. It looks like we had a nice uptick in goals in the second season. Once again, Volan was the top goal scorer with 29, but Buffal netted 27, Kovalenko netted 23. For the assist categories, we had four players in double digits, Kovalenko, Buffal, Ward Prowse, and Aguirre, who took over at the right back spot. I believe Cedric did make a transfer to Real Madrid, so a big move for him. Once again, I'll leave you with a side-by-side -side look of the squad between the start of season two on the left and the start of season three on the right. I think this team has one more season left in them before we start seeing some major declining in the overall ratings. Let's do one last season with Southampton, see if we can win the Europa League. I swear we are just a little bit short of qualifying for Champions League, finishing just one point shy of Spurs for that fourth place spot, but we have moved up one league position to fifth, so that's a positive. Manchester City three-peated, but for the relegated side, Sheffield United, something's going wrong with Everton as they went back down to the championship and Fulham also being relegated. I was expecting another semi-final performance in the FA Cup, but we've landed one round shy, losing in the sixth round or the quarterfinals to Liverpool who went on to win the competition. Another early exit for us in the Carabao Cup as we lost to Manchester United again in the third round. Liverpool won both the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup, so a good season for them. You have got to be joking me. Milan matched up against us in the Europa League once again. That means they got knocked out of the Champions League, made it all the way to the final of the Europa League, and beat us on penalties in back-to-back -back seasons. We cannot catch a break. Buffel seems to be the breakout player in this squad, now all the way up to a 91 overall rating dynamic potential at work and he had 37 goals this season. Kovalenko with 31, kind of a down season for Volan, only 20 goals, and then Ward Prowse finishing with 15 goals. Assist category, of course, it's going to go to Ward Prowse with 21. Klossi netted into our starting 11 as Schneiderlan left, and he managed 12 assists. In case you were interested in the overall rating growth this season, this is the side-by-side -side comparison. Start of season three on the left, end of season three on the right, but that is going to wrap things up for today's episode of the flashback Southampton career mode. Hope you all have enjoyed it, and I hope you got hit with a little bit of nostalgia with this Southampton career mode. I certainly enjoyed revisiting it. Again, if you want to see more of these type of episodes in the future, let me know down in the comment section below, also by leaving a like on the video. But until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you all again soon.